Okay, so this is an introduction to Dante's Inferno. Inferno. I'll be talking about the author and the book and a little bit about hell. Okay, so Dante Alighieri, born in 1265. Even that date is unknown. There is no birth certificate. In fact, it's just an educated guess on the day or date or year he was born. In fact, most of the information we get about his birth date is from the Inferno itself, the book. He put himself in the book. So he's the author and he's the main character. And he talks a little bit about his life in the book. We're just taking that as maybe truth and trying to figure out his birth date. But one thing we do know for sure, he was born in Florence, Italy, because Florence is a huge, huge part of his life. And there's documented records of his life in Florence. Right here is a map of Florence, um, or I'm sorry, Italy, back in the 12th, 13th centuries. So it looks nothing like this today. Politically speaking, the shape of Italy is the boot as it always has been. The boot's like down here at the bottom, you'll have to see. But um, what you see are lots of different families scattered throughout. A lot of the political lines were drawn by family lines, very much like an old world mafia, if you will. The territory would change quite frequently. Back then, uh, things were crazy. I mean, politics determined not only the, um, the borders of the territories, but sometimes you'd have full-scale full battles over one thing. Basically, if you couldn't solve it through voting, you took it outside and resolved it. So, way. You know, kind of like those mafia movies, right? Sometimes you can handle business over a plate of spaghetti. Sometimes you gotta take it out in the street and take care of business, right? Either way, it's the Italian way, and it's always been that way. So, uh, Dante lived here in Tuscany, and more specifically in Florence. Has anybody heard of Tuscany or Tuscany style, Tuscany food, whatever? Okay. So, it, well, what's in? Why? Why is Tuscany known so much for its? It's flair, it's style. Well, Florence is right there. And Florence is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Definitely was one of the most beautiful cities in the medieval ages. Uh, in fact, to be anyone important in Florence, you had to become part of some sort of art guild. You had to be an artist of some sort to, be, to hold even political office. So or art, it was, that city was filled with great artists and thinkers. Here's a picture of what Florence looks like today. You can see it still retains a lot of that old world charm. Uh, what dominates the landscape here? Churches. That's right, churches. Um, obviously, it's not a whole lot of room to drive. Okay, that's, I think this is where they came up with smart cars, those little <laughs> tiny little things that you can yeah, step on. They probably have tinier cars. Well, this is where they come from. Look at those. These weren't designed for cars. These roads are designed for people walking or a horse at the most. Now, you, it looks like you can jump across all those roofs and have a good one. Right? There's all these movies. Oh, you could play Assassin's Creed. I think the third one, you're actually in Florence. It's uh, Blood. That's oh, the second one. Okay, the second Assassin's Creed, you want to run around and kill people, you can do that. Only thing is, it takes place in the Renaissance, not medieval times. So it's about two to three hundred years after Dante's life. But things may not have changed all that much. Even now. It still almost looks the same even now. If you go to Italy, anyone going to Italy? Yes, I've You go in like Italian club or something? They go right over well, if you ever go, you'll see um, statues of Dante. Here's one right here. So, Dante, you know, he's a pretty, uh, pretty important guy. Um, back in his life, let's talk a little bit about his early life. 
When he was a young man, he was what they call a magistrate. He held political office. This is a palace where he actually worked at in the 1300s. It's still there. I mean, they've added electricity, some carpet, maybe some running water, but it's still the same place. Maybe his ghost is still there. I don't know. But anyway, um, he was an important guy. He lived a good life as far as comfortable being comfortable. You know, it's good to be a politician back then. So. That, can't be the real place. that is it. The Regina Palace. That's it. It's like Caesar's Palace. Yeah, so. No. <laughs> it's not true. Okay, but anyway, Regina Palace, great place. He lived a good life, got married, had some kids. But then, his political party gets split between the blacks and whites. And it wasn't racial. It was a name. It was this, they, the black, I guess they were black, I don't know. Blacks and whites. Well, he was part of, he was part of the whites. And the blacks came in and took over. They basically killed everybody that they wanted, mostly political people. And they told Dante to, to take a hike. Get out of here. And if you come back to Florence, we will burn you at the stake, alive. So Dante, and she did die at an early age. She actually married a banker, but that's a whole different story. Anyway, she didn't even know that he loved her that much. He ends up roaming the desert, having lost his Beatrice, and that's when the book about hell was born. So, in fact, we're going to see Beatrice appear in hell and heaven. We'll see her appear in the narrative. Here and there. No, she'll appear in the narrative. She's not actually in hell. She's actually hanging around in heaven. All right, so let's talk about the game. Everyone, you know, if you've got the game, game's cool. It's got these cool effects with hell. Here's, you know, Dante fighting this big demon dude. Here's Dante with this big weapon that he gets. Is that a good weapon? All right. Um, however, the real Dante might look at this and say, wait, what? Okay. Unfortunately, the real Dante's Inferno is not a guy, a knight, running around killing monsters. Oh, believe me, there are monsters. But he doesn't have weapons. He is himself an Italian poet and scholar. He's just an observer. He's not there to fight monsters. He can't even fight monsters if he wanted to. He's just a poet. He has his words, his language. He does get some help from a guy named Virgil. This is a picture from Devil, Devil May Cry, right? Now, Virgil is a Roman poet. Some people would say, the Virgil. Not a guy named Virgil, no, the Virgil. He is the Roman poet who lived 1,300 years before Dante was even born. But Virgil, the Roman poet, has been placed in hell and has been living in hell time. And he gets to, I guess he got elected, he gets to take Dante on a guided tour. He is the tour guide. So unfortunately, Dante and Virgil don't have these cool weapons and cool outfits. Here's a picture depicting what's probably the real Dante and Virgil. Dante with the red cap, Virgil with the olive branches around his head, showing that Roman heritage that he has. And they both go unarmed through hell and see all the sights. And we get to go on that guided tour along with them. So these are all people in hell and some, I think they're on the river Styx right here. These are the people. Maybe they're trying to get back on the boat. The boat's taking them into hell. They're clawing and fighting their way to get back in. They want to go. They're being dragged into hell, basically. All right, so that's that. Let's talk about the book. The book has three parts, the Inferno, the Purgatory, and Paradise. The Inferno is hell, Paradise is heaven. It's the middle book that's controversial. Purgatory. How many of you have heard of purgatory? Okay. It's a Catholic thing. 
Purgatory does not appear in the Christian Bible. There's no mention of it anywhere by Christ or the disciples or anyone in the Old Testament. But it is well known in the Catholic Church. And what this place is, it's a place where you one can work off their sins. So you weren't bad enough to go to hell, but you weren't good enough to get to heaven. So what do they do with you? They send you to purgatory. And there you can learn how to repent. For example, maybe in life you're just a really proud and prideful person. You didn't want to listen to anybody. Maybe you're a nice guy, but you didn't want to listen to anybody. So you never went to church. You didn't obey God, so you can't go to heaven. But she didn't kill any babies or anything, so you're not going to hell. So you get to go to purgatory, and to, you have to learn to be humble before authority. So you will wear a concrete slab on your back, and it's going to make you crawl around on your hands and knees. Do that for 100 years. You will learn what it means to bow before authority. That's your sentence served. You get to go to heaven now, I guess. So that's purgatory. Let's talk about the rule of three. Dante wrote this book using what he called the rule of three, which is the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The rule of three is everywhere in the Divine Comedy. There are 33 chapters per book. 33, 33, 33. 33 times three is 99. Then he added one extra chapter in the beginning because there's only one God. So, God, God's chapter is the introduction. One God. And then it goes 33, 33, 33. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, the poem, this entire thing is a poem. It's an epic. Every third line rhymes. So, he was doing a lot when he couldn't see his Beatrice again. He was doing a lot of, making up a lot of rap songs, right? <laughs> Every third line, rhyming. Okay, so that's the rule of three.